Yes, sir. Big Stewie checking in. You know what's going on, man. It's all about that trapping at the trap house. You know I always be tapping in with everybody that got something going on. And I ain't talked to my good friend in a minute. Goes by the name of Trinidad James. Woo! James. We in the building. Ten, what's up, baby? Man, 10 years strong, bro. 10 years. Can you believe it? Yes. Does that mean we getting old? Um, or are we getting better? It, well, I got better. Okay, I think I got better, too. Yeah, I think you did, too. You know what I'm saying? I had a, I had a good 40. Look, You know what I'm saying? Look, so 40 man. don't look like this. You, you know, black good, don't crack. Bro. Come on now. It look good <laughs> on you, man. No, no, no BS, man. You know, honestly, bro. The main thing, and I'm going to keep saying this because I really feel this way, bro. The main thing that I'm thankful for with this 10-year mark uh-huh. is not being bitter. Come on now. I Why would you? What would you call it? Because I, I see my peers and I see older artists who, like, this game really did them bad and they're mad. Mm. They hate a lot of things um, that kind of starts with self. Come on now. I, Let's I, talk I, about I don't, it. I, I don't want to be that guy. No, you can't. You know Let's saying? talk about but it. Like, bro, I'm telling you, bro, this – Bro, I've I've had the blessing to be the number one famous nigga on earth. Right. And I see the all the powers and the energies and the ups and downs that come with it. And I understand why some people are the way that they are. But I, I wanna tell you, man, I was like, look, I use them as the example of like, look, I will never let money make me feel that way. Come on now. You know, and um that's the thing about it, you know, you you get into this and they just throw us in that water and expect us to know how to swim, you know, and we take you 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 put yourself close to people who you think believe in you, but in reality, you got to understand people believe in the business they can do with you. Right. Unless they're fa- your family or somebody that's really been down since day one, they don't really know you, so they can't really be in love with you. But you said one thing, it starts with self. So yes. how can you be mad and be bitter about somebody but other than being mad at yourself because you make the wrong decisions? Because a clearly, lot of us don't realize that it's us. Because I, I have to say it, that clearly you're still looking fly, you're still looking fresh, you know what I'm saying? You right. ain't you ain't missed no drip. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ten years later, yeah. you know what I'm saying? People might be like, well, he only had one song. Well, one song can do you real good. It's guys out there that drop albums out the albums doing bad, stressed out. Amen. So do you really think that, like, is that is it that much stress in the industry or do people allow themselves to be stressful like it's, that? I think it goes both ways. I think that it's based on the character, the fingerprint of the man or the woman involved in the situation because everybody gets the same opportunities thrown at them, mm. but everybody handles it different. Mm. And I get to see it because I'm never focused on being famous, but I feel like my peers feel like they have to be famous to be important. Right. And I don't think that I have to be famous to be important. So let's let's go back to, to 10 years ago, all right? Clothing store. Everybody knew you was working a shoe mm-hmm. store, clothing Gensa. store. Just getting yes, it. You know what I'm saying? Humble beginnings. Always been humble. Always been cool. You get one of the biggest songs in the world, biggest songs in the country, just yes, drops, sir. hits. Was that on purpose? Like, Putting that, you know what I'm saying? Like, was that ever on purpose? The way you dressed, the way your your style was. Did you put that whole shoot together? Be like, this is what I'm gonna do, and I know this is gonna do that. Was it planned, or was so it just the something? results? I could not take I, <clears throat> the results. I can't tell you a lot for. Okay, um, but the intention to the style, yes, mm-hmm. um, but not more. Not where like oh. This leopard print shirt and these red pants gonna be the thing that make me a big thing. Like, nah, I would have wore that to come anywhere, anywhere, right? To come to the bar and chill with you, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, the style I knew from working at the store and a lot of artists and DJs and different people shopping with me, I knew that my image was already done, right? Because they wanted my style. The things I was wearing were the things that were right there in the store, but the way that I put it on, they'd be like, man, I want that. Mm. And I'm like, bro, it's right there. How whatever, but you really wanted how I did it. So right. that showed me from an early t- standpoint. I'm like, oh, okay, I got something that you want. Right. And to all these people, they look at you the way that you look at me. Mm. So then I need to do something that's in the realm of what you do that allows those people that look at you to look at me for both. Mm. How whatever, because I right already now. know in style, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> come, on, come on, man, you're going to put I'm, it on. I'm going to beat you, you know what I'm saying, because it's just not what you do. Because you came to me to do it. Right. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't go to nobody to do it. So tell me this. Moving, like, as far as you being fashion forward, like, where does it come from? Like, when did it start? When did you know, like, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm fresh. I, I know what's going on. I think it come from on. my friends, man. Okay. It come from my friends. It come from one of my older brothers. Um, I did, I have four brothers and four sisters, but I grew up by myself, so I'm an only child mindset. Right. But I, at one point in time in my younger years, like around, like, 12 years old, I went to New York for the first time to, like, really, really just hang out with my older brother. And um, when I went to his crib... And went and checked out his closet. Or like, no, no, I just went in his room. Mm -hmm. And he had to show me his closet. Mm. And when he showed me his closet, I was like, dang, he has more jeans than I got clothes. Right. And shoes put together. Right. And I was like, what am I missing here? Right. And um, that kind of just stuck with me. And um, my buddies around me, they were very stylish growing up here in Atlanta. And finding my individuality in my close circle group is where my style started. Mm. 
where it's like, all right, bet. We on retro. So, okay, you going to look like this. You going to look like this. I'm going to do this then. Oh, we on the rock star with the tattoo sleeves and those, like, you know, the sleeve shirts that used to wear the tattoo right. sleeves on it. However, like, we doing that? Okay, well, I'm going to do this. You know, and it was influenced from different things. You know, for me, it's been like Andre 2000 and Dungeon Family. Come on now. But it's also been moments like Jewel Santana and Dipset. Right. Where it was like... Phew, the pink, oh, when oh. camera started start rocking that pink, when guys yeah. wouldn't even put that on. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, I've always been a hybrid type of person where it's like, I'm going to take a little bit of Andre. I'm going to take a little bit of Cameron. I'm going to take a little bit of James Brown. I'm going to take a little bit of either this Missy. I'm going to take a little bit of Buster. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and over doing that in my teens, by the time I got to my 20s, and being able to work at a boutique as like South South Lake Mall. Right. When I first got a chance to work at my first boutique, it kind of just like put me in the clothes. I was like, oh, now I can see the clothes early. Right. And I know how I'm going to kill it before anybody even right. see the things that's coming. So it just made me more powerful in knowledge. And then I got to my dream job at the time, which was Ginza right here on top of the underground. And while I was even more powerful because I'm getting more money because I got a few jobs. I'm hustling in the streets. Right. I, the like, shoes is a big deal. People looking at me as like the shoe guy. And I'm um, just like really all those moments before music. By the time I got to music, it was easy. Yeah, I didn't need to hire a stylist. Still right. shout out to my brother, Ronaldo Nehemiah. For you sure. know what I'm saying? For like just being like, look, bro. I can't tell you what to dress, but whatever you need, I go get it. Right, facts. Or whatever. And if you need my suggestions, I got you. Because he knew I had it in the bag. So how big do you think fashion is? Because I feel like like you were one of those people that, like I said, fashion for. You don't see a lot of guys that's in the industry or girls either. Like really just pushing the pushing the envelope. Like you came out pushing. Like, huh. Right. Here, Andre came out pushing. Right, right, See what right, I'm right. saying? So how important do you think if fashion is in the music industry? How is it connected? So I think that it's 68% of my business. And then 13% of it is like just my energy, the mm-hmm. man that I am. And the rest is music. Mm. Or whatever. So huge. Right. You know, without it, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. Right. Because it just wouldn't matter up. Or whatever, I wouldn't be motivated enough to still wake up and go out here and crush it and put the work in that I need to if the only thing I was relying on was music to be somebody. Right. You know, but the fact that I have a sock brand to push every day. Come on now. A clothing brand, sold out shoes. Come on now. Um, cut and sew on the way. You know, I'm in seven stores with my sock brand around America. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I got more to just get up for than just like wondering like, Am I going to make another all go everything? Like, I don't think like that. Right. I'm making the music of, like, how my life is moving in the current time. Right. You know, my story, if my story matches with your story, then we on the same page. If it doesn't, pl- please catch me the next time. So you, you know? so, so just knowing you, like, over the years, you never felt, I, I feel like you never felt pressure. Like, you never got into um, the, the tit for tat with different artists. You never really got into the mental, mental state. You always was in a safe place. You kept your surroundings tight. How do you feel about what's going on with Kanye West right now? Because I feel like right now, um, a lot of black men don't understand what he's going through. Right. Sometimes I don't even know what he's going That's through. That's real. But how do you, what is your outlook on what Kanye West is going through right now? So I think the best thing that I can say about Ye is that um, it's the first thing I'm going to say is something that me and you both know is like it's not about what you're saying, it's how you say it. Right. You know, I think that when you have a problem with five Jews, you can't make it seem like you got a problem with five million Jews. Mm. You know, and that's just the truth. I whatever. I love Kanye. He one of the flyest people that I think in ever to do this. Right. You know, um, one of the most confident black men probably ever. Right. To be an artist, I'm a musician, should I say? Right. Um, but I think that it's just about how you say things. You know, I think that when we get so passionate, um, I think we all as black people have a certain type of passion, and sometimes uh, it corrupts um, our expression in the moment. Mm. Um, and you know, I'm not here to make an excuse for him. I think that you know. Uh, he has to deal with the consequences that he's dealing with. But at the same time, I think that he's just moving like Michael Jordan. I just said this earlier, you know, it's like Michael Jordan did 20 years at least in the league. Mm. He only got six rings. Right. That means he, he had 14 losing seasons. Right, facts. You know what I'm saying? So don't feel no type of way because, like, I lost $2 billion a day. Or he was down $50 million before he became a billionaire. Come on now. So so my thought like this, okay, and this is bizarre because I, I just like to just talk to people that I know have opinions. So... You get a black man to go on live and go on all these different channels to talk down about Black Lives Matter, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody does anything. But as soon as you say something about Jewish people and white people, everybody pulls back from you. Yes, sir. That says a lot. Yeah, I mean, what's it called? You know, um, at the end of the day, you know, we're at that we're at that place, and um, a, a young lady brought this to my attention earlier. You know, where it's like, bro. Do not deny the power and the energy of millennials Mm. and the way that they are treating these older. guides and rules that's been in place for hundreds and hundreds of years, I would ever look. That's the that's the 
the line that we're falling in between. Millennials just don't care about mm. these books. They don't care about that Bible. Mm. They don't care about the Constitution because it's corrupt. They don't mm. care about um, the pandemic because it's corrupt. They don't mm. care about COVID because it's corrupt from their mindset. I think that, you know, to answer your question, when it's like, oh, you talk about a black man. Okay. You talk about Jews. It's like, whoa, the whole house is on fire. It just shows you where the power still relies. Mm. Um, if you were the number one, had something, if you owned all the businesses, if everybody's distribution got to come through you, if everybody, whatever they do, still got to come through you, then when somebody's coming at you, it just shows, and once again, you have your own fingerprint. So your reaction to a situation is based on who you are in your culture. These how Jews react. If you're the most powerful person and you're talking crazy about me, I'm going to shut you down mm. because you don't run nothing. Mm. And until you run something, then you can run me out of here. So let me ask you this, a twist to it. Did they really shut him down or did he just get all his contracts that he didn't want to be in in the first place? I think that's what we got to stay tuned for to see how he moves. <laughs> I'm ready to see, Look, I'm ready to hey, see what he's going to hey, do hey, now. And that's, and that's why it's always about what's next. Come that, on now. That's what keeps us going, bro, to see what this man going to do next. Because what he does next is actually going to be the solidification. I don't know if that's a word. What's going to solidify Come on now. the actual action of right now for mm. him what you see happens next because that might be the why mm. the why that he's telling you right now you're not hearing it mm. we won't hear it right we're listening we're watching but we're not hearing it and i always use the comparison between the giraffe and the lion everybody's like oh i'm a lion or ah. oh, whatever but a giraffe has a better perspective than a lion come on now they see what's coming okay now well i'm gonna tell you what i see what's coming i think he's no longer a billionaire but they've possibly created a trillionaire hey and if that's the case, it's like, yeah, show us the way. Show us the way, King. Show us the way. You know what I'm saying? For because, sure. like, look, either way, what do we know? We not we haven't had that chance, opportunity to have that giraffe view yet. Mm. So until we have that view, we got to move like the lions that we are. It don't make you less of nothing in the jungle because the lion is the king of the jungle. Come on now. But the giraffe's perspective is different than the lion's. Come on. Words from Trinidad James, ladies and gentlemen. Trap out the trap house. You know it. We always going to talk that good good. You dig? Hey. It's Hot 107.